take a look at the new babies. Hi guys. Wow, they're all really in a pile. Okay. Kitten number one. How are you? This is the sickie. Can you talk to me? Is he even alive? Are you alive? Oh my god. Hi, Bonnie. He looks terrible. He's rough. He looks really bad. Okay. My god. Yeah, he looks really bad. Okay, so they didn't get any fluids, right? Nope. Okay. So this is our little critical baby. You can see that he's not doing so hot. He's definitely emaciated. You can feel his rib cage. And he had live fleas on him. And his temperature was really low. He has a very gaunt look to his face. You can see that he looks pretty triangular. We call that triangle face or muscle wasting, where the muscles are really wasting away on the body. And that is definitely not a good sign. But the fact that he is taking some steps shows that he's not a lost cause. He's trying, he's still in there. So we're dealing with a bunch of different things with this kitten. Um, we're dealing with upper respiratory symptoms. We're dealing with dehydration. We're dealing with hypothermia. We're dealing with a lot of different things and we have to decide which steps we wanna take and in what order. So for him, because he's so dehydrated, the first step is definitely warm fluids because that's gonna help um, both with his body temperature and with his hydration. We do wanna get the fleas off of him, but we don't wanna wash a kitten who is really cold. Um, so I would think the next step for him would be to get him nice and warm. So he's gonna go into the incubator. So one of the first things I'm gonna do for this little guy is get him some warm fluids with B12 in them. So for that, I have my warm bag of LRS, lactated ringer solution. And I am just going to pull up an appropriate amount of fluids for him. Okay, so I pull up my fluids using a large gauge needle. I am going to put vitamin B12 in with their subcutaneous fluids to just pull up 0.1 cc's, 0.1. And it is water soluble, so the kitten will pee out whatever they don't use. Don't be alarmed if your kitten pees and it looks a little bit pink uh, after they receive B12 they're going to pee out whatever they don't use and it's gonna look similar to this color. So just a heads up, because that can be a little alarming if you don't know. And then what you can do is take your LRS that you pulled up, add the B12 into your fluids, which you can see here. Then I'm gonna attach a butterfly needle to my fluids. I'm going to prime the needle so that a little bit of the fluid comes out the end. And now this is ready to go. With my little guy here, I just pinch up his scruff and then I place the needle parallel. And it's just gonna go right into the skin. I know, it don't feel so good. It'll feel better later. I know, I know. I'm gonna just pull that out. You got a little camel hump. You do, that's gonna feel better. That's gonna feel a little bit better. Okay, so at least he has some hydration now. Did you have to go pee? You really had to go pee. So his pee is pretty pigmented, which is a sign that he is dehydrated. If you see very dark urine, that's gonna be a sign they haven't had any hydration in a little while. So that should feel really good to get those fluids. It's gonna feel even better when we get some food in you, if you'll accept it. You don't look so good either. So this one, her eye is like sealed shut. You got a goopy eye, so we gotta clean you up too. We're gonna at least give everyone some potty relief right away. I'd be curious like what their story was, like how long they've been without their mom, because they look pretty bad. Yeah. All of the kittens are going to get fluids because it's very obvious that they have been without mom for
for quite a bit of time. We want to get fluids on board right away. And it can feel a little funny. She got her fluid bubble. You don't look so good. These guys are rough. He feels cold. So you need to go into the incubator too. But let's help you pee first. These poor babies, they look terrible. Check that out, that's beautiful. So now he's got this nice little fluid bubble underneath the skin. And that just delivered warmth, hydration, potassium, B12, electrolytes. That is gonna feel so good. Who's back here? Hello. This one looks okay. A little bit more chunk on ya. I know. You really had to go potty, huh? When you have kittens who have so many different things going on, it's all like weighing priorities. You got your fluids! Definitely first thing is to get them warm. Okay, last one. Hi! Wow, you are beautiful. Oh. This one seems pretty sturdy. Yeah, but this one has crackly chest. You have crackly chest. You better not have pneumonia, but if you do, we'll take care of it. Everyone is being stimulated to go potty. The assumption is they probably haven't been with mom in many hours. Dehydration is a major killer of kittens. So we wanna do everything we can when we get in dehydrated kittens to get them hydrated as quickly as possible. And now you've got hydration. You're so filthy. So now everybody's in the incubator. So something essential for taking care of sick kittens is you have to weigh them and you need to weigh them many times throughout the day. So even though they don't have names yet, they still get weighed and you can just write their description. So this is the calico. She's 320 grams. You write it down, 320. Tabby is 333. This one is about 300. That's the black. 278. And we have our little sickie. 233. A little tiny one. So there's their weights, and I'm gonna weigh them every couple hours. Okay, so this little guy looks horrible. Being able to accept food orally is always the safest bet, so I'm gonna try and just see if he will accept it. Can you taste? How's that? How's that? So he actually is swallowing. Okay. Are you a boy or a girl? You're a boy. Oh my God, you already have testicles? How old are you? What? Okay. This little one looks really rough. I'm gonna do my best for you. Just clean him up a little bit. Kittens also honestly benefit from a gentle touch. They know when someone is caring for them and they know when no one's caring for them and that's really scary for them. Clean you up, get you looking a little better. Hopefully get you feeling a little better. This little guy is definitely off to a rough start. So this is what a critical kitten looks like. You know, you have to use your judgment with these little ones. Anytime you're working with a dehydrated neonatal kitten who's drinking from a bottle, I highly recommend that instead of mixing their formula with water, you mix their formula with Pedialyte or any other electrolyte solution. Of course, make sure that you're getting something that doesn't have a flavor to it. They're not gonna appreciate fruit punch, but this unflavored, Pedialyte is something that I use with every single dehydrated kitten that I take in. Put it together in a smoothie shaker and then shake it vigorously. Now you can add this Pedialyte formula to your bottle. Of 
course, the Pedialyte needs to go back in the fridge and you need to be mindful of expiration on that. I had these guys for a couple hours and they're not great eaters, but I'm gonna see if I feed them in their incubator if they will latch. Let's find out. almost a whole bottle. So because these guys have upper respiratory infections and also some chest sounds, they're going to be on two different antibiotics prescribed by a vet. It's really important that you keep up with your antibiotics for your kittens, especially if they have respiratory infections. A lot of these kittens can't get through without medication. Don't let anyone tell you you can't give an antibiotic to a kitten. You absolutely can. If your vet tells you that, go to a different vet. You just have to give them the proper dose and you dose by weight, so their dose might be really small. Do you have fleas too? Okay, Jimmy, let's make this quick. Good job, Jimmy. Jimmy, you're so smart. You're such a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Ah! 